here at uh, Always Forward, we want to uh, keep you abreast of what's happening in the church planting world within the, within the Anglican Church in North America and want to bring you perspectives of different church planters and church planting leaders from, from around our province as well. And so today I had the opportunity to sit down with a good friend of mine, Dr. Winfield Bevins. Uh, Dr. Bevins, I, gotta call you, I guess I can just call you Winfield on the... Uh, just call me Winfield. All right. so, so Winfield um, is, uh, is the canon for church planting for the Diocese of the Carolinas and also the director of the Church Planting Initiative at Asbury Theological Seminary as well. It has a, has a long history within church planting, and so we just thought we would spend a few minutes with Winfield today getting his perspective on some, some, uh, some Anglican church planting issues. How are you, buddy? Good, doing okay. good. How about yeah. you, Dan? Good, man. I'm good. All right, so let me let me ask you a few questions. We only have a few minutes, so let me yep. let me dive right into things. So you, uh, I've known you for a number of years, and uh, I know that your background is um, is from a low church evangelical background, and you have done church planting in non sacramental traditions as well. And then uh, the Lord got a hold of your heart and moved you over into uh, into the the Anglican world. And so I'd, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, sort of about the the ecumenical side of things, or um, or perhaps a bit about that uh, the transition in. Um, I, one of uh, one of the things that I would ask is, from your experience in non-sacramental traditions and planting in non-sacramental traditions, and then also planting in the Anglican tradition, what are what are some Anglican distinctives that um, that have a particularly positive impact on church planting? And just to prepare you, the next question is. I'm going to ask the converse of that as well. So, so what are what are some Anglican distinctives? What are the things about our Anglican tradition that that uh, that have a particularly positive help in the work of church planting? Yeah, I think some of the things in terms of church planting that a- Anglicanism brings uh, in the area of distinctives is uh, a clear focus on the sacraments. Mm. Um, uh, you know, coming to the table, Lord's table, each week uh, to be fed, um, to be filled to be healed, restored, in order to be sent back out on mission. Uh, This view of kind of a sacramental view of life, um, to where all of life is a sacrament, and that so we come together in order to um, be sent back out on mission. You know, even in the liturgy, uh, you know, the you know, the final blessing is a sending out, where the priest sends you out to go forth, you know, to to love and serve the Lord. also, one of the things that I think is unique in Anglicanism that you, you don't really see in some of the non-liturgical, uh, non-sacramental traditions is the role of a bishop. A lot of church planners are out there, they're independent, um, they don't really have the support. And in the Anglican world, bishops are unique in that really they're pastors to pastors and pastors to their churches and their diocese. And uh, that's one of the things that I saw that was really missing in a lot of independent church planters' lives is just lacking kind of the spiritual structure. Um, the, the third final, I mean, I could mention a, lo- a lot of things, but the third unique contribution that I think Anglicanism brings is um, it just the whole host of spiritual resources for discipleship and formation, like catechesis, um, uh, you know, the daily prayer, morning and evening prayer, um, you know, the Book of Common Prayer is just an just a, just, just ancient resource that is, is accessible to all of us. And it's really a gift, I believe, to uh, the larger body of Christ as well. The passion that I have with my writing, a lot of what I share in the more evangelical uh, circles, is kind of sharing those resources with others to help them as well as they're planting and discipling people in whatever tradition they're a part of. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then let me let me follow that up then with the with the logical converse, right? What what what, what are aspects of Anglicanism and the Anglican tradition that uh, that are are things that we need to be aware are uh, add some challenge to the work of church planting? And I'm not saying. What things should we dump? I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but, but what do we have to recognize? Are are uh, provide a particular challenge into the work of church planning that that are still integral to who we are as Anglicans? Yeah, um, probably one is the I, I would say the liturgy, the liturgical aspect. Um, you have you have kind of two sides of that coin. You have some people who. Uh, come from non-traditional backgrounds, e- even pagans who, uh, you know, one of our church planters in the Carolinas as a surfer who moved from California to plant, we helped plant him in Asheville, and he shows up at the coffee house with his collar on, and 
people just gather around him every time he's there and you know they ask questions and um, kind of in a post-Christian culture you have two responses to that. One, you have those that are really drawn to things sacramental they don't even know why and then you have others who are repelled you know for the kind of the very same reason and so uh, in Anglican church planning I think that can be a blessing and not a curse but can also be one of the challenges to helping people overcome what is the liturgy? Because once you understand what the liturgy is, there's, there's this beauty, there's this connecting with tradition, there's a deep, rich theology that's connected with that. And we live in an a-historical, a-theological culture, and so uh, I think once people come to appreciate and understand, it can actually be a great source of benefit and blessing. Um, the other one is just, and, and again, it's, a, it's an understanding issue, is, is the regular weekly celebration of the Eucharist. There are those that are really longing for it, but then there are those coming from low church backgrounds that are like, do we really have to do the Lord's Supper every week? But they don't really understand uh, what's really happening um, and the dynamic of, of why we do share in the Lord's Supper and celebrate it each week. So those are, um, I think it's an issue to, of understanding. Mm -hmm. And so my encouragement to church planters as they're planting Anglican churches to just teach, do good catechesis work and, and teach people why we do these things. I think a lot of times, Anglicans just, you know, there's just this idea we just set up shop and start doing the liturgy and we'll grow a church. I think, no, I think it's a wonderful moment in our history to be able to really teach others why we do what we do. Um, and that's a part of the discipleship process. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of, the, one of the greatest joys for me in church planting has been seeing not only unbelievers come to a new faith in Christ and, uh, and, a, and a recognition of the depth and the beauty of the tools that Anglicanism brings to that, but then also seeing folks who have spent years and years and years and years and years in a liturgical tradition uh, but never knew why they did the things that they do uh, and to, to help inject into them a realization of the gospel-centered nature of what we do and the catechetical nature of what we do and the missional nature of what we do. It's like a light bulb comes on sometimes and they go, oh, that's why we've done that. And it makes it even more beautiful and meaningful for them as well. Um, so uh, so you, planted a, you planted a surfer church, and we're both from Eastern North Carolina. We both spent a great yeah. deal of time in Eastern North Carolina anyway. And you, you planted a surfer church. It's, uh, I've been out there. I would call you all the time, and I'd say, hey, when should I do? And he said, well, the surf's pretty bad today, so I'm just kind of sitting on the beach. It seems like you're, <laughs> you're always on the beach <laughs> when I called you. But yeah. uh, um, how, did, how did these, these aspects of Anglicanism, the things that, were, that you mentioned as uh, as, as blessings and tools and things that might be a little bit of a challenge. How did that, uh, can you talk a little bit about how that w uh, played out in the surf culture that you, uh, that you were planting in? Because that, it almost seems from, from a distance like those two things would be very contrary, but, but you found them to, found the Anglican tradition to be very beneficial in, in, in the ministry there. So what was that, what was that like? Yeah, in my book Creed that I wrote with Nav Press in 2010, it shares a little bit of that journey. We had planted a church, it grew, and a lot of these young surfers were coming to Christ, and I began to ask the question, how am I going to disciple them? And so I started looking at historic forms of discipleship um, and discovered that you know there are patterns and rhythms of discipleship that the church has used throughout the centuries. And so as I began to make an Anglican journey, they just kind of took the journey with me. And uh, we really had fun with it. Um, we, um, the Lord sent a couple uh, retired priests to help us out. And we were a, a, a kind of a low church evangelical uh, church plant that um, launched, uh, we, we had, we called it One, one Church, Two Expressions. We, we launched a high church service uh, with a couple of these retired priests that I had, and you know, we'd do the full robes investments, and then our um, uh, more non-traditional kind of blended service, uh, w which most of our surfers were a part of, was, was really a beautiful blending of the tradition and the old and new. So it had a sense of, uh, you know, vibrancy and had a very contemporary sense, but at the same time, it had a, just a real clean, clear sense of um, the sacred and the traditional and elements of the liturgy. It was just really a beautiful blending of kind of all the worlds that kind of came together there in that convergence. You have 
uh, you have interaction with folks from a lot of different traditions. And there, there's, there's a lot of interest in what we do as Anglicans, and, and a lot of folks who are either in theological studies or in or leaders in the church who are both exploring Anglicanism and exploring church planting and kind of come to you or to me and they, and they ask, uh, or they say, I, I, I think I'm being drawn to Anglicanism. I think I, I think I might be called to plant a church. I don't even I don't even know where to start. What's the kind of advice that you would give to them for someone who's exploring our tradition and exploring the missional work that, that we're trying to do in church planting in the Anglican Church in North America? Where what are your what's your advice? What's your where do they get started? Well, there's a number of books and resources. Um, there's a lot of people who become Anglicans, I, myself included, who kind of read our way into the Anglican tradition. Um, but uh, I would say one of the places to get started is to actually attend an Anglican church, find um, you know some local Anglican priests, uh, church planners in your area, uh, the Always Forward website, um, uh, and just find out what's happening in your region and area. Connect with other Anglicans and and begin to ask the question, you know, uh, am I called to be a part of this tradition? Um, a number of years ago, uh, I went and visited some good friends from college um, in downtown Atlanta, Trinity Anglican Mission, Chris McDaniel is the rector there, and spent a weekend with them when I was kind of in the discernment process, and um, Chris, you know, said something to me that was really profound. He said, you know, you've You've been splashing in the stream your whole ministry, and I had been. I've been using the Book of Common Prayer uh, ever since I've been in ministry. And he said, you know, there comes a time where you have to ask the Lord, can I actually get in this stream? Um, and I, I left there sensing, yes, the Lord has called me to join and to become an Anglican and be a part of this, this wonderful, vibrant movement that is old and new and uh, is planting churches like crazy, which is a, it's a missional church planting movement, which mm -hmm is so exciting, but it's also connected to deep roots of church history and the Anglican tradition. And so I would just say, come and see. Um, check out an Anglican church. Get to know um, Anglicans. Don't, don't be intimidated by the collars and robes. Um, it's a beautiful tradition and just a warm-hearted, um, generous faith um, that we would welcome all to come and to come and see what the Lord's doing here. Great. Well, thanks, Winfield, for giving us a few minutes. And uh, for more resources and articles and podcasts, uh, go to anglicancp.com. Anglican, that CP is for church planting. So anglicancp.com, that's our Always Forward website. And uh, there, there are a number of ways to connect and get your questions answered there and, uh, and tons more resources for you to check out. So we want to bless you in your work of church planting. And, and again, thanks, Winfield, for, uh, for being here with us.